Selamat pagi. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the fifth lecture of the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall, uh, a, a very innovative program put together by the Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia. Uh, I am Eugene Tan. I am a law professor at the Yong Pung Hao School of Law at the Singapore Managed University in Singapore. It's really my privilege and honor uh, you know, to be able to moderate uh, the fifth lecture uh, in, in this series. The Southeast Asia Lecture Hall is a free, independent, people-to-people -people program that aims to bring free and regular access to Southeast Asian students and lecturers to world-class lectures and lecturers from various fields of study. The Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia has partnered with various universities across Southeast Asia uh, to bring this program. Right? I, I think without the partner universities, uh, you know, the reach of uh, the lecture hall series, you know, would not be so so extensive. Her Ex Excellency Ambassador Chan Hing Chi uh, is a very distinguished uh, Singaporean diplomat and academic. Uh, she was appointed to be Singapore's ambassador uh, to the United States from 1996 to 2012. Uh, prior to her the appointment, uh, Professor Chan was Singapore's permanent representative uh, to the United Nations from 1989 to 1991. Uh, currently, she serves as the ambassador at large at the Singapore Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Good morning to all of you in Southeast Asia. I know we are at different time zones, and I really appreciate that you are getting up early for this lecture, especially those of you in Myanmar, you know. Um, you know, it is a pleasure to talk to all of you. I have not had a class of Southeast Asians in this way. Uh, Eugene forgot to mention that I'm actually a professor of politics and I was head of the political science department of the National University of Singapore before I became an ambassador. In fact, I, I, I see myself much more as a professor. During President Trump's administration, the United States introduced the term Indo-Pacific strategy. It was a response to rising China and the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. But in 1967, ASEAN was born, was established. The first Southeast Asian regional organization and what is not often emphasized is the fact that there was no U.S. hand in it. There was no big power hand to help bring about. There was no big power midwife to bring about ASEAN. The most important and worrisome development in the 21st century is the U.S.-China rivalry and the consequences and ramifications of that rivalry. I think it is particularly felt in Asia. And you have been reading in the news in the last two or three years, you know, of how this is hotting up. Uh, what can we do in ASEAN? How do you build confidence? How do you build cooperation in such a, uh, an atmosphere? I would say we can do it in different parts and we start modestly, brick by brick. Um, for those of you who are on uh, YouTube, uh, you know, please uh, post your questions so how do we, as ASEAN, normalize relations with both countries? Like what, why one of, one of them, the US and the West, want us to change our political system based on the power of the people or democracy? Uh, my question is that uh, you can see that uh, many uh, the Western scholars uh, view that the rising of China uh, is a, a serious change to, to the Southeast Asia and the whole of East Asia. There will be tension, and there will be tension everywhere, but it's more focused in our region of Asia-Pacific, Indo-Pacific, because this is where China resides. And by the way, <clears throat> the Asia-Pacific, this Asian region, is seen to be the most dynamic and uh, high-growth region in the world. So the focus will be there. Uh, and so with that, you know, uh, you know, can we put our hands together in your own way to thank 
uh, Professor Chan Hing Chi, you know, for for engaging with us and for sharing her thoughts and ideas. And I hope that, as I said, you know, they will spur you to think harder uh, and and to see how the region can progress. Thank you.